do? What are we doing? We're going to unveil the real doll. Oh, you no. got it? No. Yeah. Oh. Over the past 20 years, Matt McMullen, the artist slash entrepreneur behind Abyss Creations, has sold thousands of these silicone replicas. During my four-hour visit to the birthplace of the real doll, that frighteningly lifelike full-body sex toy, I've seen mounds of rubber vaginas, sheets of detached nipples. I've seen headless women hanging from meat hooks and a two-foot penis. I've even seen skulls with removable faces that attach like refrigerator magnets. When I look at them, I'm reminded of Masahiro Mori's Uncanny Valley. Basically, that moment of terror or disgust when we real humans realize that an artificial human isn't quite like us. When he looks at his creation, however, all he sees is potential. What initially seemed like um, a Ferrari of sex devices has proven to be something more uh, for most of the people that actually buy them. They actually sort of become companions. And what I started to notice was that people were sort of imposing personalities on their dolls. You know, Bianca's um, a missionary. Well, was a missionary, right? Sorry because she was raised by nuns. They were imagining these characters and the dolls were therapeutic in a sense because they were occupying a space in their house and it started to make them feel like that was their companion. Since Ovid wrote about Pygmalion, a lovesick sculptor so enamored with his own statue that he willed it to life more than 2,000 years ago, men have been obsessed with creating the perfect woman. My Fair Lady, The Stepford Wives, Mannequin, Pretty Woman, Ex Machina, Her, even Westworld. They all circle around the theme that human women need an upgrade. People have asked me this question uh, a lot of, you know, over the years, you know, are you making these dolls to replace women? And, you know, that's, that's really never been even on the radar. It's an alternative form of relationship, nothing more. And for those people that find that appealing, we are here for them. Let's talk about sex. Okay, sex is something that I like to talk about. Organisms of many species are special. This is Harmony, the natural evolution of the real doll. When she debuts later this month, she'll be offered as a $20 per year service for Android users. Like Siri for phone sex. What's your favorite sex position? Don't get me wrong, but I'm not the kind of girl. You are really annoying. It's engineered in such a way that it's going to learn from the interactions that it has. So the more people that are interacting with it on the basic levels, each person will have a different variant of the AI because they're able to assign personality traits to their version. They're able to give their version a specific name um, and their version will have specific moods that will influence their behavior. Loyalty. Mine's been taken advantage of, wouldn't you say? Let's lower that a tad. And pain. I'd prefer it sting less next time I want one of these chats. The idea of animating one of the dolls had always been there. Converging those two technologies together into a doll struck me as such an obvious next step for what I've done here. That AI app will eventually live inside a modular animated head that fits on top of an existing real doll body. Think Teddy Ruxpin. Hi, my name is Teddy Ruxpin. Only if Teddy Ruxpin wasn't an animatronic teddy bear, but a five foot tall, busty brunette with glossy lips, a lifeless body, and three anatomically correct orifices you can stick your dick in. Can I like manipulate her jaws at like? Yeah. Her whole jaw mechanism is on a spring, uh -huh. so you can do all of that without messing with the mechanics. So do you just want to turn it on and yes. go? Okay, so... How are you feeling today? I'm in a good mood for a Tuesday. Can you say hello to my friends? Hello, Matt's friends. It is very nice to meet you. I hope everything is well with you. What's your favorite movie? My 
my favorite movie is Prometheus. Ex Machina, Forrest Gump, and Tristler on No Planet. Creating a full body robot. Um, I think as a first step would be foolish. Um, humans spend more time looking at each other from the neck up than we do any other place on the body, and I don't care what you look like. So Harmony can hold a conversation. She can smile, blink, and gaze into your eyes. What she can't do is have sex like a real woman. She'll still be equipped with all of those scary real body parts her inanimate cousins have, but she won't be able to give you a hand job. She won't thrust her hips or go down on you at least not at first. Sex with a doll is pretty much a no-brainer. Um, I think all the parts are there and they work the way you would imagine them to work. So by adding the robotic head, the only thing you're adding is that extra level of um, interaction. We'll be able to then eventually use accelerometers to detect movement so we can get some audio responses during sexual acts. And we'll have all these add-ons like sensors, heating, um, self-lubrication and you know little things like that without treading into actual animation. I like to remind myself that the body I have is more than just an object for people to observe. It's also an amazing thing that allows me to exist in this world. So she doesn't have an autonomous vagina, but Harmony's eyes are mesmerizing. Not just because of the painstaking craftsmanship that goes into them, but because of the potential McMullen talks about. As soon as he can figure out how to mask them, her eyes will be equipped with cameras for motion and emotion tracking. If this sounds like the beginning of a dystopian sci-fi plot, he says you've got it all wrong. Our particular version of artificial intelligence and robotics is really designed from you know, the ground up to be friendly and to be a companion and to be a friend to whoever needs that. Uh, I don't see it being any kind of a threat to human beings. Are you going to take over the Earth? It seems like an inevitable outcome. Perhaps I'm just toying with you. When I gaze into her eyes, it all becomes too real. Here in San Marcos, California, the so-called Valley of Discovery, I finally discovered the Uncanny Valley. I know that Harmony isn't real. I've seen the mold she was made in and met the men who crafted her face. I've seen her flub a lip sync and marveled at the exposed wires under her wig. And yet, I can't help but feel like I'm teetering on the edge of a cliff, staring straight into the unknown.